Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will spend some time discussing enzymes. As I said, enzymes are, most of the enzymes are proteins. So we will see what are these enzymes, how some of the proteins act as enzymes, what do they do and how do they do it. So what are enzymes? Enzymes in simple words are protein catalysts. So you by now you know what are proteins. So I don't really need to explain. But what are catalysts? When we talk about a catalyst, I mean, we would have spoken about it. You would have heard about it in your junior classes. Catalysts are those substances which can change the rate of a chemical reaction. When I say rate of a chemical reaction, I'm talking about how fast the reaction takes place. So there are sub some substances which can increase the speed of a chemical reaction. So those substances are catalysts. So enzymes are catalysts. Enzymes are basically they are made up of proteins I and mean, they are proteins rather and they act as catalysts in all the chemical reactions which take place inside our body. So they are also known as biocatalysts because they act as catalysts inside living organisms, inside the body of living organisms, whichever reaction takes place. So they facilitate biochemical reactions inside the body of living organisms. Now, when I say biochemical reactions, what sort of reactions am I talking about? So uh, when you look at the body of any living organism, there are many processes taking place like the digestion, respiration, circulation, excretion. Now, in each of these processes, a lot of chemical reaction has to take place. For example, when the process of respiration happens, what happens? Oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given out. That is only the uh, gaseous exchange part. But how is that oxygen utilized in our cells? So in, in each of the cells in our body, cellular respiration takes place. So that those reactions involved in cellular respiration, they actually take place. So multiple reactions, the metabolic reactions are taking place inside our body. So enzymes facilitate those reactions. Enzymes increase the rate of those reactions. So that is how they play a very important role in the metabolic activities of our body. So here the picture which is shown on the screen that represents an enzyme. So obviously since enzymes are proteins, you can expect the structure of enzyme to also to be like proteins. So this is how the digestive system. So they lower the activation energy for a reaction. So that is how they get things done. I mean, how can they make the reaction take place in a faster way? Or how can they facilitate the reaction? That is by lowering the activation energy. What is activation energy? This is the input energy needed for any reaction to start. For example, just take a very normal example from your day-to-day -day life. Suppose you want to start a business. Any person wants to start a business. So in order to start that business, you need some capital to start it. You need some money to start it. So you need to get that money from, suppose you want to start, a, open a small shop. But in that shop, you need to have some materials which you want to sell. So in order to get those materials, you need some money. Let us suppose you need, we'll take all rough examples. Let us suppose you need 10,000 rupees to set up the shop. So somebody has to give that 10,000 rupees to you so that you can start your business. If you don't get that 10,000 rupees, it will take a lot of time for you to save 10,000 rupees and then start a shop, right? So this input, the minimum input which you need to start a business, that is the activation energy. Similarly, in case of a reaction, the minimum energy that you need to start a reaction, that is activation energy. So these enzymes, they do not provide the activation energy, but they reduce the activation energy. Like instead of 10,000, if you have, if enzymes are there, then that 10,000 will reduce to 2,000. So now you need only 2000 rupees to start your business. So when that amount decreases, it becomes easier for you. So it becomes easier to find somebody who can give you 2000 rupees. Now it is difficult to find somebody who can give you 10,000 rupees because that is a huge amount. But if you need only 2000 bucks, you can find somebody who can give that to you. 
So that is the concept of enzymes. So they do not provide the activation energy, but they lower the activation energy needed to start a reaction. And that is how they facilitate biochemical reactions which take place inside the body of living organisms. So when you talk about activation energy, you can say that this is the input energy to start a reaction. Now it has been observed that if the same reactions were to happen outside the body at the same temperature and pressure without enzymes, they could be fatal to the body of the living organism. So enzymes are that critical. So you can understand the role of enzymes in the metabolic reactions. Now the question is, are all enzymes proteins? Because we, we started defining enzymes as protein catalysts. We say they are all proteins. So are all of them proteins or there are some exceptions to it? So the answer is mostly enzymes are proteins. So most of the enzymes are proteins. However, there are some nucleic acids which also behave like enzymes and they are known as ribozymes. Now we have not discussed about nucleic acids yet. So once we discuss about nucleic acid, you will get to know how they act as enzymes. Now when I say nucleic acid, what all comes under nucleic acid? Things like RNA, DNA, they all fall under the category of nucleic acids. So it has been seen that at times RNA can also act as enzymes. And this property of RNA was discovered by uh, a pair of scientists Altman and Zeck who were awarded Nobel Prize in the field of chemistry around uh, 1989. So this was something which was uh, discovered quite lately that even some of the nucleic acids can also behave like enzymes but otherwise most of the enzymes are proteinaceous that is they are proteins. So this is how a ribozyme look like. So let us now talk about the protein enzymes that is the normal enzymes which are mostly proteins those group of enzymes. Now again they are of they can be of two types that is simple protein enzymes the enzymes which are only proteins that means they are proteins nothing else is there linked to the protein group it is only protein so they are simple protein enzymes whereas there are another type of enzymes called hollow enzymes what are hollow enzymes they are conjugated protein enzymes that means they not only have protein along with that protein there is another group which is attached there is a non-protein group attached to the protein group so these kind of enzymes will have a protein group and a non-protein group so that is why they are called conjugated conjugation means uh, com combination of two different things so one protein group one non-protein group so these enzymes have a non-protein group bound to a protein group. So this is how a hollow enzyme would be. It has a non-protein group which is known as prosthetic group. So this is the name given to the non-protein group. Now this non-protein group can be anything. It can be metallic in nature so it can be metals or it can be organic like vitamins. Similarly, there is a protein group. So this protein group is known as apoenzyme. So protein group is apoenzyme. When the apoenzyme combines with the prosthetic group, it becomes a hollow enzyme. And this prosthetic group can be metals or vitamins. So these metals are known as cofactors. So please remember these terms because they are going to help you cofactors, prosthetic group, apoenzymes, these are going to be useful later. So these metals, so when a metal is attached to the apoenzyme, then the metal is called cofactors. These metals are very tightly bound to the protein group. So they are tightly bound. So example of cofactors would be Fe2+, for example, this is metallic in nature. So this is a cofactor in enzyme catalase. So the catalase is an enzyme where you have a cofactor Fe2+. Similarly, the vitamins. So if the non-protein group is vitamins, they are known as coenzyme. 
So this coenzyme is generally loosely bound to the protein group. An example of a coenzyme is NAD, that is nicotinamide, are coenzymes in many oxidizing um, enzymes present in mitochondria. So NAD is nicotinamide, right? So in short, we can say that hollow enzyme, there are two types of enzymes. One is simple protein enzymes, which are purely protein. And hollow enzymes are those which has a protein group and a non-protein group. So the protein group is apoenzyme and the non-protein group is prosthetic group. That prosthetic group can be a cofactor or a coenzyme. So I hope this is clear. What is simple protein enzymes and what are hollow enzymes? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.